Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. It's Yvonne from Ginger Chick Rehab. I am so glad to have you back checking out what Chris and I are up to. So in today's video, I am bringing you a thrift haul and makeover video. So actually this one is not going to be very long. I didn't find very much thrifting. It was spring break here. Um, and I don't know if that made a difference. A lot of people were in the thrift stores when we'd go in. It was just packed almost every day. So the pickings were very much picked over. I wasn't very lucky. Uh, they all can't be great. So, but I thought, you know what? I'm going to stick with that weekly thing. Whether whatever I have is what I have to share with you all and whatever I have to make over. And there's always something on my to-do, um, cabinets that I can always throw into the makeovers. Which last week's when I end, ended up doing that, I know I, I there was probably too, too much. It didn't seem like that lo seem like that much when I, I until you started editing. So I'm sorry for that. I hope you enjoyed. So yeah, so this week is a little bit smaller, and you never know what I might throw in there extra um, off my to do shelf, which is I, I love to get to that thing. So I don't know about you all. I don't like a to do shelf. I like to get things done. So anyway, let's get into this thrift haul. Right off the bat, for $3.29, I found another one of these purses. I'm trying not to pick up the ring light. Now, I found a pink one. I had it in the booth for about a week. Um, and then I've had a couple of people respond that they were interested in me putting it on the eBay store. So I thought, I'll pick this one up. I'll do the same. I'll probably list this one on eBay. I know everybody wants me to comment on that. Um, it's just hard to decide. A lot of times I put the eBay stuff up with what people ask to buy. It's kind of hard because you don't really know until the sh you, you realize like what I have to price it and what the shipping and handling is. So, but I will definitely put this one up on eBay. So if anybody is interested, I, my son always researches them and that's how he determines the prices. So sometimes I don't even know. So go along with glass and then here we're Two little birds, two little bir blue birds. These were $5.29. Oh my goodness. Now I've seen these separately. I've never seen them together. They still have the original tag on them. So, yep, that's not a tag I would take off. Um, nope, blue birds of happiness. Oh, I didn't realize that. They're the blue birds of happiness. <laughs> How sweet is that? So, definitely love these. Um, unless somebody says something, they'll go these will go into um, the booth. Unless somebody says something. So we're going on little trinkets. Now for $3.99, I just, this caught my eye. It's one of those pieces of rock, grant, I don't know what it's called. Um, but it had those little road runners on it. Oh my gosh, it definitely reminds me of vintage. Uh, yeah, I, you know, I'm just attracted to that. I've never seen one in road runners. And actually for $3.99, I thought it was a good price because I have actually seen these at, our store, our store is getting a little bit crazy with their pricing that I actually have to pass things up. And maybe that's why my thrift haul is so low. I'm like, I, I can't, you know, I just can't. So I definitely thought these little road runners were very cute. Um, yeah, they're just a $3.99 price tag from Salvation Army. And then let's see, here's another one. I know I picked up the bigger version from Ikea of these little, what are they for drawing? But I just think they're, me, I think they're cute decorations. So this little guy was $2.29. Um, so I thought that was a great little price. I think these are just cool little, if you're a drawer, if you're not a drawer, his arm doesn't want to see, his arm wants to stay for, I don't, I don't know what his arm wants to do. It, anyway, but I think they're, I think they're just a cool little piece that you don't have to do anything to. Whether you use it for art, or whether you just set it on a shelf for decor. Oh, Dad, let me put his, it, you know, it's thrifted. You always have to fix it. So the seat came off, but I can glue this back on. And I was actually thinking about patinaing these seats anyway. Um, so it was just a bicycle built for two. <laughs> I always think these are neat. And I um, I like the ones that sit on a bookshelf. I think they're very cool. I, I stay away from the ones that hang on the wall. I don't know if people actually would hang them on the wall, but shelf sitters... But I thought it would be neat to patina the seats a little bit so it didn't look so manufactured. 
Um, hopefully the once I clean it, because you can see it's really dusty, unless it needs new spray paint. Sometimes when you clean them, all the dirt takes the paint off. So yeah, just cute. I think this one was $3.29. It's lost its tag. Sometimes that happens. But yeah, this was a Goodwill find. Now this guy probably seems a little bit scary. <laughs> Look at him. So he is actually pottery. He's a signed piece of pottery. He's been used, but and he needs a bath. He it was one of those sponge holders. $4.29. I know he's a little bit scary, but we are surrounded by lakes and lake cottages, so definitely I did not pass a piece of pottery up, a sponge holder, just a funny little piece, and I'm pretty sure that that will clean up. So for $4.29, yeah, I think this was my only piece of pottery this week actually too. And one day I walked in and they had all these beautiful, um, it's just made in China, but it's a measuring cup set. I love the way that it's made because it'd be easy to scoop or just decorations. It kind of has that, what do you call it, Santa Fe? What is the what is the word I'm looking for? You know, it's got those darker browns and the oranges and um, yeah. And it's funny because the same week earlier they had a whole bunch of Pioneer Woman and they had it priced like it was still new at Walmart so I had to walk away I don't even know how well Pioneer Woman sells, but that it was the same price as what you'd buy at Walmart. So there was a beautiful Lazy Susan, but I think it had $12 or $14 on it. So I had to walk away. So for $4.29, I'll take these. And then there was another set. Now these were measuring cups also. So yeah, look at those. Now I, I love ones that you can set on your shelves. I've sold ones not in a pattern before, but I definitely think that they're gorgeous. And then the, then there was this little spoon set. So a pinch, and then a dash, and then a drop. So I've sold um like metal ones like this before. So I, I thought, oh my gosh, those are too too cute. So that was a great find, and I believe those were four twenty. Yep, four twenty nine. Also, I guess because they didn't have the Pioneer Woman name on it, or just China. But I was good with that. I was fine with that. Ooh, let's see, four twenty nine. I did. My son actually found this for me. A uh, coffee mug. The black ones have been selling for me. Black's been selling for me. So I'm glad to find another one. Um, so I'll probably spray paint this one up black because if I paint it black and then the the white ones sell, I can always bring this home and change it into white if I need to. But I like the vintage look of it all, I think structurally. And actually, um, one of the last ones I did was a Pioneer Woman, one that had the hooks. And um, yeah, that one sold as soon as I put it in. But and you have to take what you're giving at a thrift store. So I was happy to find, especially six, usually they only have four. So a six one is nice. Well, then I have to, un I have to unravel. So this was $6.29. It's just a hanger. You just hang it outside. It's got some cobwebs and some dirt on it. But we're going into our season. I know I can't really spray it very well because then I'd um, get the marble. But I just think it's nice. Little things like this do sell. Um, so I'll I'll probably just leave this brown. Yeah, oh, you know, my, my heart always wants to paint something black. But I don't know if I can... I might be able to get that marble out. Um, so yeah, just one of those fun little swirl in the wind kind of pieces. So yeah. So I mean, it was six twenty nine. I think eighteen sounds too much for it. I might go fifteen um, and then see how it sells. Depends on if I decide to paint it or not. Now this box I ran across and then I passed it. It just, it says grow on the top. It was $4.29. It's got some slats in it. So once I saw the slats, I'm like, oh, this would be so nice to sit outside on your porch, to have your tools, your gardening tools in it, your gardening gloves in it because it was, it's closed. I mean, I don't know, here in Michigan, I couldn't set anything. My, I could not set gloves out <laughs> because the little critters would be like, oh, thank you for the bedding. Um, I, but you definitely could put your gloves or your, your, like your tools in there. So I thought that was kind of nice. 
so I definitely probably will paint this up because it's that vintage burgundy and I know that this is engraved so that I can distress and it will still stick out. So I love the flowers on it. Can't you see how? Oh, it's so pretty. And so while we're doing, a, doing another box for $2.29, I don't know, can you see that? This is definitely an older, I love those little numbers in it on it it's actually hard plastic and it actually has all these let me know what you think this was used for oh my goodness i just i don't know i we don't even know what we're going to use it for i don't know if i'd resell it hoard on to it for a while the little numbers vintage numbers got me so for 2.99 2.99 at the salvation army yeah sometimes you're just like i don't know I don't need it, but then you bring it home. <laughs> so I thought well, I thought it was a very cool, I, I would have really loved it to be metal, but hey, you take what you get. But I mean, it's a nice hard plastic. Oh, this was $7.29. It's wood. It's just a wood, huge finial. Um, I definitely would love to do some chippy paint on it. Um, it's kind of got a pinky salmon it to it right now. So I definitely would love to do that with it. So I'm excited about that. Yep, it's just, it's wood, it's, yeah, it's just a manufactured piece. It's huge, huge. So for $7.29, I can get 28, 32, 35 for a piece like this. Huge decor piece, so I like that. My next two were these lanterns. Now they were $12.29, but I didn't hesitate only because they're huge. I can only hold up what I want. They're huge, as you can see, um, big. Um, and I don't need to do anything to them. So like, if I needed, if they were needy, I needed to do something for the twelve twenty nine price, I would have passed them up. But I think this size, I could get thirty two a piece for it. So that's twenty dollar price. I mean, they're huge. They're beautiful. I don't know who made them. The glass is heavy. The glass, I mean, I could, it does look like I could, but I, I like that. I think the gray is beautiful on these. These are definitely, and it's not a cheap, it's not a cheap tin. So, so I was happy with that find. Sometimes you have to outweigh, if I have to do a lot of to it for that price, I would have had to leave them behind. Okay, so this was $4.29, but it, I, I have wash boards that I need to put in the booth, but I don't, I, it just, you know, the thing about having a booth is it's always about being able to display something. You just never know where am I going to put it, how am I going to display it, so the next thing you know it gets pushed off into your inventory because you don't really have an area to display it. And so I wasn't going to pick this up, but then my son was with me and he's like, glass washboards in this area don't come off. And he's like, I'm like, you're right, I better pick this one up. It's glass for $4.29. I definitely probably would do um, some other paint on it. So. It, it pops that. I still have the one, the lady from the estate sale, um, Kathy, years be, or like a year before that had given me all some of her own stuff. And then one was a beautiful um, glass wash board that I used to display in my laundry room, but then I redid it. And so that's just been sitting. It's so hard sometimes, you know, you know, you should get rid of stuff, but you're like, but I liked it. And I don't, I don't know where to display it. So do y'all do that? Like, well, I know I should get rid of it because it's not out in my decor, but anyway, but I definitely will paint this one up and maybe I'll figure out a display. Um, I know when I first started, I had them and then I had those really heavy irons um, that never sold, never. I basically gave those away. I pass those up all the time because they do not sell unless somebody needs a doorstop. They just do not sell in our area. And I learned that early on. And so I kind of had it displayed and sometimes I would put a wreath on. If I put a wreath on the washboard, it would sell a little bit more. So it's just one of those, it's hard to figure out. You have to figure out each area of what people are looking for. So that Salvation Army, look at this little watering can. Oh my goodness, $2.99, oh my goodness. I can see putting a little transfer on it. I loved it that it had a lid that was patinaed. Oh my gosh, it's not brass, it's just, oh, but it's so cute. It's so cute and just something as simple as putting some wording on it, I think is good enough for how cute this little, this little can is, oh my gosh. Just $2.99, I thought that was a great price. And at the same Salvation Army, there was this guy 
he's like, hi, $2.99. Um, just a little chunky owl, little baby owlet maybe. Oh my goodness. I have, did you guys watch my suitcase video? Did you see why I had to order those and use them up? Oh my gosh, the owls are so, there's just something about owls that's just so beautiful. So I guess I could not pass this little chunky outlet up. He's cute. he's a little cutie. I wish he had a friend, but yeah, we'll see how he goes. I don't think there's anything I need to do to him. We'll see if somebody wants him. And then for $2.99, I don't know. There's something about, I've now picked up enough ironstone that usually I don't do like bowls. I have to determine like Chris saw a gravy bolt. And I thought, no, because I already do pictures. And if, But the next thing I know, I'm picking up this piece of ironstone. There was just something that I knew that this was ironstone. And so I had to pick it up. Just a nice little, I don't know, bowl serving. I don't know. Maybe the gravy boat was supposed to go in it, but they had them priced separately. I, did, I used to have gravy boats and then I sold them. Cause I thought I have to determine, do I want pictures? <laughs> do I, ha I have to make up my mind what I want. So yes, I, so I just, I don't do the gravy boat. So anyway, oh, I see Glenn's back there. It's just going to be a thrift haul thing where Glenn is constantly, apparently this is his spot behind me where he likes to lay. So I hope you all are cat lovers. Now I did have a couple little antique finds. Um, I went, I wanted to go in video one of the local another one outside of town antique mall but i like to ask before i do it especially since we're local um but there was nobody there to ask, <laughs> to ask to video so we still went through the mall anyway so hopefully i can go back down there it just takes time to you know go through antique mall but i've been looking for more little vintage um bottles these i think were a dollar a piece because those flower um the music sheet flowers sold really fast, so I'd like to make some more up, and I'll probably do another video on that, um, about doing those, maybe with some different, oh, those are so pretty, so pretty, and I think I have enough supplies. And then I've been looking for another one of these, these metal frogs. So this one was under the $9 price tag, and that's what I was looking for, something. So this one was $9, so I actually, have a display with one other. I've only ever thrifted one. Um, and then I have it with a ball jar lid. So I really would like two on top of each other. So do you guys all do that when you're out looking, you know, you have a price in mind, what you want to spend on something and you'll pass it up until you find the right price. And this was one of it is I knew I wanted another one of these for my own decor, but I was only willing to spend X amount of money. And there you go. Because I don't know about you, next week I might decide to change that whole decor. So, uh, you know, one new thing. So that is all I have for this week's thrift haul. So let's get into the makeovers. So I said I'd add a couple items in here and this has been in my stash and it's perfect time of the year to start doing one of these. So this has been here. Um, yep, so I'm going to get that done. I would like to make a sunflower mold. I don't have any of those. So we'll go ahead and get this piece done. And then this is something my son bought um, some glassware off of somebody. And then they had glued the praying hands back together. So I told them, I think I can put some texture paint on that for you. So you're, it, um, it'll look a lot better for him to resell. And then I have to share my find. We had a family friend um, finally go through some of her estate. Her husband passed away 13 years ago. And she had, he was a woodworker, so Chris went over to look at some of the tools, and then there was this. Oh my goodness. So I have an idea for that. I have a picture changed. So yes, I bought this beautiful <laughs> off of her. Oh my goodness. It just needs a bath. I'm pretty excited about it. How about you all? <laughs> oh my gosh. Heavy, heavy, heavy just needs a bath. So I'll get this cleaned up and I don't know if we can make it into our water feature. Oh my gosh, I love it. So I'll share what Chris picked if you all want to take a gander since this isn't too long of a video. I don't have a lot of stuff to so make. So Chris over. actually bought, got this. This is what he wanted. It's a drum sander, a spindle sander. Um, so he does not have one of these. And so, yes, he was super excited. 
um, to pick up this type of tool. I don't know how excited you all are, but I never argue when Chris wants a tool because if you watch our channel enough, you know he never tells me no when I ask him to make something. So this is like the man's play toy. <laughs> so, yep, he, I'm sure he's going to find something to be able to use this to show the skills of it once he learns and it. And then he did buy one of Jerry's toolboxes. So this was the toolbox that it was. And then it was all packed with all these tools that made that look exciting to us. But he just absolutely loved the little treasures, was happy to get the toolbox and just to see what, um, yeah, what was, what was in there. So, yep, he, you know, we all collect stuff and he likes to collect tools, so... And then we actually went, he actually wanted one of this also. This is a picture frame pliers. So, you know, we do a lot of windows here on the channel. So this actually helps you put those little um, glazing slides in. So that, yeah, it's new, new in box. And I'm not really sure what this is. Looks like a shoe shine box to me. Oh, it's some type of, it's some type of something. <laughs> I don't know what it is, guys. I don't know. I, I I don't know what it is, but it's a cool box. It's got a cool tool, and yes, I, I can't tell you right off the bat. I have no idea. I guess I'll have to ask Chris what it is, so yeah. But yeah, happy little finds. Nice little patina mailbox, or nice little patina toolbox. And then there was an old planer, and Chris, Chris collects planers, so... I said he needs to make a display area in the workshop for his. So, yep, this is this is it. I don't know if you all can see this, but this was a rusty, crusty old planer. He should have took a before picture of how rusty, crusty it was. He was so excited to get it that, I mean, I think he did do maybe a little bit of video if I can steal it. He's hanging it up there. I said he needs to display his... I mean, because it's not anything you would ever really use just for a display, but it was it was just as rusty and crusty as this was. And then he just took his time, cleaned it off. He just likes a good challenge. So, yeah, this is just one of the little things he likes to collect. This is his little patinaed <laughs> um, tool area, um, which has grown over time. So he... He should. I think he should just do it above the shelves, take that stuff down. But, it, you know, I, I work in here. I know it's mine, too. But this is was always his dream to have a workshop. So I think he should do it above those. So anyway, let's get back to the makeover. Okay, so let's start right off with this and see if I can get this marble out or not. So I think it's it's springy enough that I think that I can get it just adjusted just enough to pop that marble out because I want to keep that marble as is. Oh, yep, I got it. I'm just going to go ahead and stick this right inside my hot water with Dawn dish soap bucket today. There's just so many cobwebs that I'm just going to try to get them all off of this. So it definitely had been stored somewhere. So now after it is all dry, I'm going in with Rust-Oleum Paint and Primer in the flat black. And I did um, have to use some of the hockey pucks that I thrifted because, you know, sometimes those objects, they just kind of tilt and roll on their own. So if you ever see hockey pucks while you're out, um, thrift in and pick them up because they do come in handy to hold things in place. And after that side was dry, I could go in and spray the other side, just trying to hit all those angles. Sometimes they're not always the easiest, so just kind of keep spinning around, look at different angles so you can make sure that you thoroughly got it covered. And then after that was dry, I went in with some polycrylic to seal that Rust-Oleum paint all in, and now I have to just put the marble back in. Remember, never trust that something is clean enough just to start painting on it. You always want to get it washed off. Get anything, any residue that might prevent your paint from sticking, especially on the smaller items. A lot of times I don't pre-sand, so I definitely want to make sure that my paint is going to stick.
to make that rust-oleum paint work on your items you definitely want to add a top coat like polycrylic is definitely my go-to that way that seals that paint in now since this has so much detail on it i'm going to go in with a sandpaper and i'm just going to start distressing some of those sharp edges around the bottom and then where the curve pieces are where the mugs will be hanging i definitely want to go in there and do a little bit of detail also sometimes you can get it to go your sandpaper to go around the round object but this time nope i had to go around the object myself sometimes you can cup it but it was not it was not cooperating with me today so i just took my time and just hit those edges just bringing out that natural wood underneath after I got it distressed the way I wanted to I'm going back in with a fine grit steel wool and just make sure all my where I sanded are nice and smooth and then I'm just sanding smooth that polycrylic and opening it up because yes I'm going to be putting some antiquing wax to tie this all together We know that the one seat it will easily come off but can i get that other one off it's it spins around so i definitely would like to tighten it up and then i will need to take some of the glue chunk there's one glue chunk that just doesn't want to leave so i'm just going to go get some needle nose pliers and pinch it until it breaks it's probably just that it's pretty brittle is why it did not stay yep just like the other piece of metal i did i'm just gonna dunk this into the bucket in hopes that it soaks some of this dust and whatever's making that dust stay there so well off and though i cleaned it it's still just i don't know it just did not look the best that it could so i'm going to go ahead while well, i'm spraying anyway and give it a new coat of paint after the polycrylic is dry on this, I didn't get video of that, sorry about that, but I'm going to re-glue these on. I think I'm just going to go ahead and use the CA glue to glue these back on, but first I want to take some sandpaper around the outer edges of the seat just so it doesn't look so manufactured and see if antiquing wax will just give them a little bit of age. All it kind of did was take it back to the original color. Ah, you know, you have to try. So anyway, I'm going to go ahead and get these glued back on. So just a little bit of the CA glue in the hole. Then I'm going to um, go ahead and stick it onto the bike and then do a little bit of the accelerator. We sprayed the accelerator right onto the metal rod of the bicycle itself. And then I should not have went back in with that second squirt to accelerate it even more because the when I just I had just waxed that so what happened is then it reactivates that wax and makes it really wet and then if you accidentally touch it like I did on the second seat um it kind of messes up the finish but so I'm just gonna leave it as is it's that perfectly imperfect I just want to let you know that I should have just left it good enough alone I sprayed this sprayed the metal and then just stuck it on let it you know you always want to make it go faster than 15 seconds Uh, as I'm getting this washboard cleaned up, nope, that was not the original green on it. I could see the green in the glass itself. So, okay, so I'm going to work on it, but it's got that, all those little marks where the glass is wavy and I don't know. So I'm going to try my best to get it wet down and then take an X-Acto knife to see if I can chip as much of it off as I can. I don't want my paint, then I'm going to be painting it getting on the glass. So I'm going to go in with some two inch dollar 
general masking tape and just tape off both sides. The, even though I'm not really going to paint the back, it's got that beautiful aged patina wood on the back. I am going to go ahead and make sure I'm protecting both sides of this glass. As I'm taking this into the spray room already, I'm like, I wonder if I can use that glue crack and lean technique just to show some of this green underneath. Now, I don't know if it'll work with spray paint or not, but why not go ahead? So I'm just going to just randomly put some of the Dollar General glue, or the, actually the Dollar Tree glue with the Dollar 25 glue <laughs> on just random places on this washboard. I did let it sit a bit so I got that film over that I'm just not mixing that wet glue in with my paint. So now after it got that little bit of a film, I'm going to go in and yep, I'm going to spray paint right over the top of it and we'll see if this works or not. Okay, even before I got my polycrylic on this, you can see that little spot that I kind of tested to see if it was going to work or not. And it was going to be perfect. So happy that you all enjoy watching me create things and try new techniques all the time. I would definitely think of any of you that watched me from the beginning, I definitely have added colors and techniques in that you probably never thought I was going to. So now I'm just taking some sandpaper and just sanding off where I had put that glue. I didn't want it to go crazy. I just thought that was a really pretty green underneath. I think I'm just gonna stamp wash wash co whatever my letters will fit so i just have my iod type setting stamps i just thought it would be easier to stamp on than to make a stencil let's call this i've already spent a lot of time on something i'm not even sure if it's going to sell or not but it is fun to share techniques and share my vision for things only wash will fit that's fine so i'm just going to line them up making sure the bottom of the letter where it's that it's going to stamp is lined up and then i'm just going to use some packing tape some clear packing tape to grab it on the space this just makes it very easy to handle then i fold over my packing tape to make little handles so I'm just going to be using IOD white ink to get my letters all stamped up. The white's definitely going to pop on the front of this black with a little bit of green coming through. Set that off the side, let my ink dry, and now I'm going to seal my letters in with a little bit of polycrylic. I wanted to seal my letters in because I want to go ahead and antique wax the whole washboard. That's why I put the polycrylic on before I distress because I wanted to even get a little bit of the antiquing wax onto that green. And sometimes when you do antiquing wax over a stamped that's not sealed in, sometimes it takes it off. So just to be on the safe side, I wanted my wash to stay where it was. I didn't want it to erase it. So yep, just a little bit of antiquing wax all over the front of this. That's just going to even tie in a little bit more and give it that aged look. So now we're up to this little gardening box. That's what I'm going to call it with the word grow on it. I'm just going to get it all cleaned up. I know it has that primitive kind of burgundy and I know some people are probably sad that I'm covering over it, but I don't think that makes that beautiful flower and that word pop very much. I like to start from the inside and it is nice to have a spray can to be able to do a cubby like this, even though I'm starting on the sides first. But, and I do get a lot of questions, why do I start off black with everything? The Rust-Oleum paint has primer in it. This is a paint and primer in one. So not only have I cleaned the items, but a lot of the smalls, I don't spend the time to scuff sand if I don't have to. And so this has that good primer that's going to adhere well to these items. Oh. 
Okay, so I did think that maybe I would chalk paint white and distress it and make all this show. But, you know, I got those patinas in my cupboard and I really like using these patinas. So I'm going to start off with the copper and the antiquing gold first and see how I like that. You know how a project is. You just keep working on it till you love it. And I do really love applying these with the Dollar Tree stencil brushes. Um, it's kind of, I've done them enough now that I kind of can tell which brush after I've cleaned it goes with which one because they do, those patinas do dry hard as a rock on your brush. So you definitely want to make sure you're cleaning them out each time so they're ready to use. So just a little bit of that rub and buff goes a long way. So very gingerly am I applying it to all those raised areas on this top. I'm going to go in with some of the antique gold. I think there's a different couple different types of gold in the rub and buff line. So uh, it just happens that the one that I got has a little bit more antiquing. But look at how quickly that makes those flowers pop. And then I wanted them to pop just a little bit more. Now this is the jar patina. This definitely, it looks really bright when you're adding it at first, but it definitely tones down. And now it probably didn't want to go over the rub and buff quite as much as it could have if I would have done it first, but that's okay because I didn't really want it to be that bright color that I had to really tone down. I just really wanted to accentuate these flowers and then when I got them done, I kind of like, oh, I still got that aged copper and you know how copper kind of does that greenish as it ages, but see, as I'm layering it, just keep liking the flowers more and more. After I've played with it enough to I get it to where I really love it, I set it off to the side, let it dry for about an hour. It does kind of change color as it's oxidizing and then I seal it in with some more polycrylic. Now I have this little watering can rain gauge and something I bought, as you saw, in October or so. Just kind of set it off the side because nobody's really catching a lot of rain here in Michigan at that time of the year. So now I'm just going to go ahead and get it cleaned up. And yep, we're going to give it a fresh coat of black spray paint. didn't worry about the inside of this. I didn't tape it off. I just always sprayed so I was going away from that I wasn't going to spray in and it worked out. <laughs> it might not have always but this time it did. So I am using Rust-Oleum's chalk paint. I have a mixed can that I mixed white linen and the chiffon cream in together. That just takes down the really white white. So I'm kind of going to give it an enamel wear type of look. I'm taking my little detailed brush and going along that rolled edging to make that kind of enamel wear. comes to putting my second coat on this is chalk paint so if I just want to try to paint on top of the paint I would just be taking the paint off so you need to mist it down ever so slightly just enough to wet that surface so it just glides on and then I'm just going to add my second coat of paint and it actually ended up because probably because I was using a small brush and I didn't want it to drip and run it took me four coats to completely cover this my fourth coat was dry the same thing I misted it every time I'm going to go back in with a wet wipe and then I'm going to get any of that rolled edge that I didn't want the white paint to be on and go ahead and get that cleaned up first if I would not have polycrylic this before putting the white paint on it may not have cleaned up as easily 
the reason I like the Rust-Oleum chalk paint because it distresses really easy. Just a wet wipe. Now I'm going to go along those numbers. And then if I get too much off or I don't want because they're raised but not a ton raised, you can always go back in and touch them up. But yes, as soon as you start to get them wet it starts to remove the paint itself so you can just see the number and then I take a paper towel to take that wetness off because sometimes it's kind of a grayish color because I want the black to be what is showing after wet distressing and touching up any that you might want to paint make sure that you let it thoroughly dry before sealing it in with polycrylic if you don't it can crackle Okay, so now we can get to this big guy, this giant wood finial. Oh my gosh. Yes, I definitely am super excited about making this one over. So getting it nice and clean first. We get it all sprayed and sealed in. Now I'm gonna, I want to do that same glue crackle on this. So, but I want to see some underlying colors and not just the black. I really absolutely love that birdhouse I just recently did that had the red underneath. So I'm gonna go ahead and put just some what I would imagine colors. I do have a few colors in my arsenal. So I have this moss and the fawn and I'm just going to random, randomly put some splotches of those colors on this finial. Now I let that chalk paint dry. Now I'm going to go in with the Dollar Tree glue. So I'm just, same thing with the glue. I'm just going to do random sp spotches all over. I want to have some of the black, some of the fawn, some of the moss. I want to be able, when it crackles, to be able to see those areas. After that, glue had dried just a bit so it has that kind of a coating on the top of it but doesn't dry completely I'm going in and I have been I have some other things that I've been spraying so I have my sprayer set up with the kills paint and primer so I'm just going to go ahead and spray this up right away you can start as see as it's starting to dry it's already starting to crackle I did not accelerate it. I just let it dry on it oh, its own and where it crackled and I showed you that was it. That's all it crackled, guys. What the heck happened? Did I not put on enough glue? Because I know when I did the birdhouse, it was just running off. Was it the chalk paint? I don't know. Everything is always a trial and error. <laughs> so, so now I'm really going to have to go in and sand this a lot to get to those underneath colors. That's kind of disappointing, but it you never know. Sometimes your vision works out for the first try, or sometimes you got to put a little bit more work into it. And I really felt like I was putting a lot of glue on there, but who knows if it was the material and it was soaking in, if it was the Waverly chalk paint that soaked it in. I don't know, but oh well, I'm not, I'm not going to redo it. It is what it is. As I'm beginning to do this, I wondered how many items, us DIY thrift lifters, how many items we have saved from going into the landfill just because that this was broken, it got glued back together, somebody didn't have the same vision that I did about saving it, just painting over it and hiding that mark. 
I just, I'm always thinking that, you know, when we are getting things from the thrift store, yes, yeah, sometimes they're in good shape. Sometimes they are a little bit on the broken side, but a lot of times it can be fixed and hidden and get a second chance at a new life. Even just painting this black, you don't even see the mark that much, but I'm gonna go in with the texture paint, the baking soda and paint mixture 50-50, and that texture paint is really going to hide where that glue was put. Now, I think I just want this to be a soft gray, so I'm just gonna mix mostly white and then just a little bit of the steel gray, just to give it a hue of gray. I used that smaller brush so I could really get into the inside area trying to make sure that you didn't see any black but now I'm moving on to my second coat after that first coat has dried and I'm not worried about the inside I think I got that really well so I'm just going to apply my second coat and make sure that everything's covered. back in and seal the, my chalk paint in with some polycrylic. I don't want these really to distress. I don't want that black to show through so I want to make sure that that chalk paint is good and on there. Now to decide what I wanted to do with these hands. I love that little hint of a gray. So I actually thought rub and buff in the silver would be beautiful on these praying hands. So I just have a flared out old paintbrush and that I'm going to very gingerly, a little bit of this goes a long way, so very gingerly going to apply it. final item that I am making over for you all today is this canister. Oh my goodness. And this has to be one of my favorites the way it turned out. I'm sorry to be a spoiler, but oh my goodness. So we're going to get it cleaned up. We're going to get go ahead and get it spray painted up, protect that inside with some tape. And then it's not like a canister. I think you'd store anything in because there's no lid, but then get it sealed in with some polycrylic. So I knew this about that canister that I had thrifted a while ago that it was big enough for me to use the IOD sunflower mold on. So I knew this for a fact that that was what I was going to do to it. So I'm just going to make one of the molds. I think this is the DAS, D-A-S um, type of air dry clay. So yep, I'm just going to make a mold out of it. And actually, um, good thing it's not completely clean because I actually forgot to dust it first. <laughs> you should always dust your molds first with a little bit of cornstarch to help the release. But God helped me on my side because when I went to release it, I was able to get it out. To glue it on, I'm just going to use a combination of Gorilla Glue in the clear, and then I'm going to use the CA glue. The Gorilla Glue takes longer to dry, and the CA glue dries like in 15 seconds if I would use it accelerator. But I always chose choose not to use the accelerator because it actually will mess up the paint itself. The chemical reaction between the spray paint and the polycrylic and the sprayer doesn't always work out so well. So I want to make sure that I just um, use the glue, hold it for 15 seconds, and then once I apply it, I set this off to the side until it is adhered and the clay starts to dry. 
Now I'm going to use that same texture paint that I used on the praying hands. I just absolutely thought that was a beautiful color. And I know I want to use texture paint because unfortunately when you put a mold on the flat surface like this, it doesn't always cover. You can see those little gaps. So I definitely like texture paint so it'll fill it in. And now my air dry clay, my mold is not completely dry. You can kind of see the variations of colors, but... It is dry enough from the one from the outer side, and then the glue itself is dry enough that, as you see, it's not sliding down. So what I'm doing here is I know I needed to let this sit overnight anyway by the time my texture paint is done. So then that mold will be good and dried, but I'm gonna go ahead and make sure all my gaps are filled in first. Now there is still some gaps showing after this had dried, so I'm gonna go ahead and try to get those gaps filled in with a little bit more of the texture paint. Don't worry about the bottom quite yet, guys. I didn't wanna to have to worry about that texture paint being rubbed off. I, my main concern is to get this flower filled in. Okay, so now I kind of hemmed and hawed how did I want to complete this flower. And I've shown you a ton of techniques. I just did a canister one video, and so I'm like, okay, antiquing wax, but can we spice this up a little bit? You know, I'm in love with those patinas. So yes, I am going to patina, but just the flower. And yet again, don't worry about the bottom. We will get to that. So I'm starting right off the bat with that very bright blue aqua. So this is probably going to scare you before it's going to get better. But that's just kind of how these patinas are. So I'm randomly just picking petals to put this on to start off with. Now we're going to add the patina in the rust. Now this is a thicker, almost has a texture, but I got texture going anyway. So same thing, I'm just gonna go in and randomly hit some of those leaves. Now if I'm not worried about if I get it off the flower right now, I can do some cleanup. I haven't sealed anything in. Okay, so now that I have those two together, I'm moving on to this other rust patina. Now, this one definitely starts to oxidize, starts to change the color, as you can see as I'm adding it right away, kind of making that greenish blue, just blending these colors together. So the same thing, I'm just going to go down the areas where the two colors are, and I'm going to blend them. And then I'm continuously working. I'm not letting anything dry out yet. I just keep kind of doing the details and working it through until it is pleasing to my eye. As I'm working to, with it, yep, I'm going back in and I'm grabbing that other color. Just keep adding until you love it. So it just kind of all blending it in. Now in the center portion, I'm gonna go ahead and use some Waverly Wax just to add a little bit of depth, a little bit of brown in the center.
then my final color is this one which is the aquily blue it's a little bit more vibrant it definitely is going to make those outer petals pop and actually i cut this video down into sections for you and it took me five minutes and 18 seconds to do all this in case you were wondering and I said I wasn't going to be concerned about having to go back up and do a little cleanup. I never ever get rid of my paint until my project is complete, especially when I've mixed up a color. Nope, I don't get rid of it. I don't clean any of my brushes. I put them in a little baggie for later. So yes, note to self, don't rinse it out until your project is completely sealed and dry and complete so now we're this is what we have i needed to let it dry and then we can go in and complete it and i said that's why not to worry about the bottom because then this is the time i was going to paint the bottom so now I feel as if that sunflower is gorgeous, personal preference, but of course I did it myself. So if, if you don't love your own work, but I still think it needs just to be tied in together and complete. So the one thing I'm going to do is finish it up with some white wax and then a little bit of the antique humex then. But first I'm going to go in and get this whole thing sealed in with the white wax. I've got my big old Annie Sloan waxing brush. I definitely love this for that texture paint just a little bit and really work it so you don't have any marks going both directions if you need be. my white wax is still wet i'm going in with a very little very very little if you think it's a little to even take less of the <laughs> antiquing wax because the more you get it on the more you have to try to take it off so a little bit with that white wax um goes a long way so yep i'm just going to do that same thing like at the white wax but even less on my brush do need to go in with a little bit of a smaller brush and kind of work that antiquing wax up into the petals as you saw yep I went right over the top of that sunflower and now I'm going to seal the whole thing in with polycrylic and let it dry So thank you for watching this week's Thrift Haul and Makeovers. And as always, give me a comment of what your favorite item that I found or that I made over. So again, thanks for being part of our YouTube family. And if you're new and you're checking out this content for the first time and you liked what you saw, please hit that subscription button along with the notification bell so you know when we've uploaded a new video. And we will see you next time, guys. You can see what we're up to. Bye.